Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another uh, Satisfactory Playthrough Series video. This is going to be episode 14 and I am so happy because I figured out the problem I was stuck on in the last episode and I'm going to show you guys what that is. So really quickly in the last episode we had added these five assemblers the two on the end over there are making reinforced plates and i was going to set these two up to make the rotors the rotors require rods and screws and so i had to get rid of that overflow box that we had for this third line of rods and just feet split that into these two assemblers so now we have um, rods going directly into them and we need to get screws to them the reinforced plates are already going you can see right now the screws are maxed uh, the plates are really the bottlenecks so we need to go figure out how to feed more plates into them more on that in a little bit i want to remind you what i was stuck on for so long but a couple of things before that so I kept trying to calculate how many resources were being used in producing this many parts uh, per minute and I realized like it just shows right there that it uses 10 rods per minute and that's because one rod makes four screws and it's every six seconds so in one minute it can produce 10 sets of four screws which is 40 parts per minute right and so that's 10 rods per minute. So all of it's already calculated. I don't know why I was making it so complicated. <laughs> the long story short is I'm an idiot and I figured out now that I can just look here. So this is um, producing 40 parts per minute. So 40 screws per minute, right? And this assembler is using 60 per minute. So in the last episode I got stuck because I realized one constructor for screws is not enough to be fed directly into one of these assemblers because it's only producing 40 whereas the assembler takes in 60 per minute. So it would be short and that's why I decided to combine two constructors but then that's overkill, right? Because two constructors would be 80 screws per minute and again this only requires 60. So what I did instead is I triple I've grouped them up into three so now we have three constructors all merged into one and then that is split in half so that makes each of these lines uh, feed 60 per minute which is exactly how many one assembler needs so now the math works out and there's no bottleneck the only reason why it stopped right now is because again we're not making enough plates so I'm so happy that I figured that out and uh, now we're going to go and do the same thing for the rotors. And the rotors it's a bit different so the math might not add up exactly but let's see we need a hundred screws per minute right and we know that we can only produce 40 here. So that's going to be rough because three I mean there's no way to break it down you'd have to have like five constructors to um how do you do math it'd be five constructors because that would get us to 200 five constructors for two assemblers and yeah there's no way that we could we can really do that right now unless we expanded this even more and then built it out that way which we totally could i don't know how that would work you'd have to like you'd have to group three into one merger two into another merger and then merge those two lines again and then split it two ways that seems pretty damn complicated for now uh i'm just gonna do it the same way that we have this set up and we can optimize it later um so i'm gonna start by merging these three I forgot I have to start from the merger to make it look pretty, otherwise it doesn't work right. 
Okay, now we have to feed that into a splitter. A splitter. And that needs to be an MK2 belt. Because these things are coming out hot. So, an MK2 line there. Then, we're going to want an MK2 line here as well. didn't come out far enough. Oh, the sun's starting to get into my eyes. There we go. And that is already set to produce rotors. So is that one. I'm just gonna close my blinds real quick. There we go. And we'll just leave this assembler idle for now. Um, also, a little temporary fix that we can do is to run this line independently so that it has its own set of plates. And maybe that will reduce the bottleneck that we have. But I think we're going to have to produce more plates anyway. This uses 30 per minute, and they're going to come in. Oh, uh, there's the dreaded sound. Let's go see if we ran out of power, or ran out of fuel rather, or if uh, we just went over. Yeah, we went over. That's that's not good. Whoa, this wasn't even maxed. Holy moly. Why was that power spike so high? Alright, well, we're going on a slug collecting mission. BRB, folks. Question is, which direction are we going to go in? I'm going to venture out this way because I haven't spent too much time going out that way. They like to be on cliffs though. So we want to find some nice looking cliffs. What is this? Caterium? Nice! Some a thick brush here. Gonna help trim it back down. See that rock right there? I'd expect there to be a slug just perched on it, but not today. Definitely haven't been up near the falls. Any slugs? Of course, if we don't find any slugs, then we can obviously just make another biomass burner. It's just a pain in the butt to have to feed so many. The benefit of making another biomass burner though, we should make like a little power plant, that would be cool. You know, in its own little housing. What the hell is that? that? Looks like an animal. Oh. Just one of those dogs. Not seeing any slugs. Oh shit. I hate how these things have like knockback in their hit. Whoa. Cool looking cave. Oh crap. That was some matrix shit right there. I heard the fireball and ran. Whoa. Oh, we got some wreckage in the gas. Whoa. We'll have to check that out. Oh. Dodge this. 
Just looking for some slugs. There's the wreckage we found earlier. In a couple episodes ago. <gasps> Holy crap, it's a whole family. Massacre. Oh, I was wondering where that third carapace was. No slugs, huh? Slim pickings out here, folks. Gotta be careful near this edge. Not trying to fall to my death. Holy. That is a long ways down. Another one of those bright red whip crystals. Where have all the slugs gone? Oh, where, oh, where have the slugs gone? Oh, no. Did we just get stuck. Okay, we're good. Oh. Yeah, there are seriously no slugs. Alright, well I don't want this episode to just be me running around unable to find slugs, so... Oh, a different land! It's sandy here. Oh shit! A cave. And some quartz. Do we dare? I think we do. But first, what the hell is that? Can I cut this down? Mycelia! The mycelia within this fungus suggests strong molecular bonding features frequently observed in adhesives and medicine, both beneficial for field research. A new research tree can now be accessed in the MAM. Hell yeah. That's good instinct to cut that down. Take some more here. Let's go check out that cave. We're doing some exploratory analysis. Woo! Whoa. Goes further down. Like nothing here. Guess we gotta go deeper. Oh, that one shoots green fireballs. Holy fuck, it's huge. Gotta let it blow its cooldown. This is a boss fight. Oh, it got me. Is it... Is it just gonna run? It's defending itself. I need a booster pack. Holy smokes! It, oh! Smart guy. Want to get back up. Holy shit, he just booked it. He's gone, though. So. Well, let's grab all the goodies in here. What? The boss respawned in here. Walk. Don't run that way. What? It just double shotted me. Damn, this thing's fucking me up. Finally got it down. 
Now I reap the spoils. Give me that summer's loop. Oh, that was what was making that sound. I didn't even realize it. Alright. Let's head back home. Really disappointed in our slug finding mission. But we did get mycelia. Some new materials. I think slugs are pretty rare. Being tag teamed. What is this? Limestone. Lame. Is that another cave? Why does this one look so much stronger? And it has horns. Oh! Beautiful. What a beautiful surprise. What is this stuff? Oh, mycelia. Tons of mycelia. We can't carry anymore, though. Yeah, we can't carry anymore. Well, now we know where to find mycelia. Gotta remember where that cave is. Oh, and there's caterium. But I can't pick it up. Pretty awesome that we found that yellow slug, though, because... Not today. Okay. God damn it. Um, yeah, because yellow slugs can produce two power shards. So that was a little blessing. <gasps> Slug. I'm going because slugs are so rare, so I don't want to forget where it is. I don't think we've explored much that way either. Hello, friend. Okay, what are we getting rid of? Get rid of the copper ore. That's the least useful. Can't touch this. Down, 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 down. Can't touch this. All right. So we can now make three power shards for some good overclocking. But I think we're also going to just go ahead and first let's dump all of our biomass material. I think we're going to make another biomass. Oh wait, that wasn't, is the wood on this side? I forgot which side the wood is on. Yeah, it just doesn't have power. But yeah, I think we're gonna make another biomass burner instead of just relying on the, the overclocking. Is it just me or did I lose this one? Oh. Well, I thought that was 10. Alright, whatever. Throw it into the grid system. And uh, then we need to connect it. Wait, there seems to be like a redundant connection somewhere here. And that wasn't the redundant connection. Let's see where our capacity's at. Okay, we're up to 181. I think we need to add a, even a fourth. Might as well future-proof this. No? Alright. I'll be your way then. Okay, we need more plates. Yoink. Mm. 
I know, I love to fuck shit up. <gasps> 211, I like it. We really do need to go figure out the coal situation so that we don't have to keep doing it, collecting all these damn leaves. Plus biomass. But there you go. Yes, we are fully connected. And it looks good. Let's make the power shards. Okay, there's a bit of an ingot shortage. At least in this line. We'll have to see what that's about. Um... These are producing 30 ingots per minute, and these are using 30 ingots per minute. Why are we combining lines here? Probably why we have the shortage. Um, because we can make... Yeah, 30 per minute and 30 per minute. So this should be a one-to-one. -one. So each smelter should feed into a constructor for iron plates. Um, so we're going to have to relay that out. But that'll have to wait for the next episode. I'm going to go ahead and clean up this area here. Floating ingots and floating rods. And this was feeding into that assembler there. We're going to get rid of all of this. Wow, this thing's got range. Okay, there we go. Now that's cleaned up. Let me get rid of these stray poles as well. Oh, they're not stray. Okay, whatever. We'll leave that for now. Um, let's get up on our perch. And uh, wrap up this episode. Okay, so there you go. Our power is back up. Um, we are moving pretty smoothly here. All four assemblers are running. These screws are being used up as fast as they're coming out. Might be uh, some room for optimization here. And on that side, we've got the screws at a standstill because it's limited by plates. The good news is we now have rotors and reinforced plates being made. We're going to figure out how to optimize that iron plate line in the next episode. But we, we did add two more biomass burners. And so we have the potential um, to overclock a lot of the stuff here. Since we have uh, three new, or how did we get so many power shards? I must have taken them out of um, somewhere and I don't remember, <laughs> but we have a whole lot of power shards to distribute. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this episode. That's going to do it. If you enjoyed it, make sure to smash that like button because it helps me out a lot and subscribe for all future content if you are new here. Check out the entire playthrough series, uh, which is in its own playlist. I'll link it in the description as well as uh, in a card in this video. And hope to see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.